Plenty of room back here, so that everybody can, can make it into this room. Come on in, thank you. Come on in, squeeze all the way in. Yeah, just keep moving back so we can get everyone in. Don't worry, he's walking through the whole room so you can keep shifting. Okay? Everybody can keep shifting. Well, why don't we get started? Okay. Well, welcome everyone and thank you for being here. I'm Danny Lichtenfeld, I'm the director of the Brattleboro Museum and Art Center. It's a true honor to have you all here tonight. Thank you for carving out time during your busy holiday season for this very exciting night for us. It will remain up through March 7th, so if it's a little too crowded and you don't get a chance to linger as long as you'd like tonight, please come back and encourage your friends to come back too. This is the 40th year. <coughs> since Patrick Leahy was elected to the Senate, the gentleman from Vermont, something I'm very proud of. There's really so much about not only our country, but the heart and soul of this man who served in the U.S. Senate for 40 years, who is now number one in seniority and president pro tem of the United States Senator, Senate, and I just thought, this is a chance for me to really look at the work, look at the history, look at all the important people, but, but to me, it's Patrick's heart when he does a picture such as this, or the boys who are the kite flying, or his conscience pictures, which he'll tell you about, that tells me why the heart and soul of this man is why I'm so proud he's my oh, senator. <laughs> It is so nice being here, uh, and thank you too, just for opening this up. I'll tell you a little bit about the photographs, and thank you again, all of you who worked so hard to make make this possible. Um, I love photography. I have taken. I've got every camera I ever had from when I was a little boy. One that my parents gave one of these expandable ones. So, Hopalong Cassidy, which I, <laughs> I'm told, box camera, which I'm told is a collector's item, and offered all kinds of money for it. I said, no. <laughs> there were Zeiss and my uh, Canons and my uh, Nikons and whatnot. So I always got a couple of them over there. But this picture, let me tell you about it. We negotiated for several years to uh, bring a congressional delegation to Tibet. And finally, uh, they agreed, and I brought the first Senate delegation there. I was joined by my dear friend and mentor in the, in the Senate, uh, Bob Stafford, mm -hmm. who was the uh, senior senator from Vermont at that time, and a man who did so much to help me by taking me under his wing when I first came there, setting aside any party differences. At that time, you would be arrested if you had a picture of the Dalai Lama. And Bob and I are about the same size. We had a third man with us. And we're walking along trying to block the view of uh, somebody from the secret police, Chinese secret police, who was tailing us. And this man with a little child spotted me, spotted my camera, his film camera at the time, and held up the uh, picture of the Dalai Lama, which he'd go to prison if he'd see it, and pointed at my camera. I thought he meant, don't take the picture. I turned the lens down. He, made, he wanted me to take the picture, so I took it and kept on walking. I had, took one frame, had no idea what I had. The uh, man with us went back, who spoke the language. Uh, he uh, was not part of the Senate delegation. He worked for another agency of our government who happened to be alive. <laughs> but he went back and he asked the man, he said, why did you risk prison for that? He said, they have to know. We got back, developed the film, came out well. By coincidence, a few weeks later, His Holiness was in my office. Marcel and I gave him the picture, told him the story, and the emotion on his face in hearing that. The Welling Wall, just look at the 
and dressed somewhat traditionally. Another man with automatic weapon and man of tourists in shorts. Wow. But all doing exactly the same thing. And I it just, I couldn't resist it. 